So good morning, welcome back to the DBS and annoyingly you join me as I'm joining the back of a traffic jam on a motorway. Not the most conducive to progress but quite the point of this video. I'm on my way to Aston Installations, wonderful place near to Tewkesbury which have developed a product to fit Apple CarPlay into older cars. I say it's convenient for the opening of this video because this is the point, isn't it? Right now, I would typically be using Waze on my phone integrated into the car. Now you could say, why don't you just suction it on the dash? Uh, well, I can't plumb the audio through the speakers until I have proper integration with my iPhone. But also, the interior of this car is so beautifully designed and so clean that the last thing I want to do is suction cup a piece of plastic to the dashboard or window and have a cable traipsing across it. You want to get in and maintain that beautiful aesthetic that uh, makes this car so nice to be in. When I announced this car, um, the guys from Aston Installations actually reached out and said, not sure if you know, but we offer Apple CarPlay as an integration. And I honestly have to say, at first, I kind of dismissed it because I thought, yeah, it'll be okay. I won't be using this car that often. Turns out I'm madly in love with this thing and I drive it all the time. And when I'm on longer journeys, just things like listening to podcasts or music, uh, which these days is entirely on my phone and sat nav, which if I had ways on before I started this journey, would have avoided the traffic jam that I'm in right now. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go back through that message and find out where those guys are and what they're all about. So that's where we're heading right now to get Apple CarPlay fitted to the Indians. Okay, so we just arrived at Aston Installations. Um, I'm gonna show you an example, as I was just talking about, uh, as to why I haven't really been overly compelled to uh, use the infotainment or sat nav in the DBS as stock. Drop the key in, we don't actually have to start it. And then press nav down here, press this enter button, and up pops the navigation. Now, I'm not sure if the camera's doing it justice, but I'm sure you can tell that the screen is, well, old to say the least. So, this is what the current sat-nav looks like. Now, it probably does the job, but if you're anything like me and you've been remotely reliant on plugging your phone in and using Waze or Google Maps, even not just for the directions themselves, but traffic diversion, speed cameras, road work notifications, anything that's time-saving or safety-enhancing, Waze, Google Maps, integration like that is fantastic. And then, I think it's not until you get into an older car that you realize just how reliant you are on the, this tech. And particularly when it comes to entertainment, music, podcasts, you just simply can't do it with the existing system if you're reliant on iTunes or Spotify. If you've been used to having these alerts and directions and music come out of the speakers of a car rather than the speaker of your phone to try and tell you when to turn left or flag up a uh, speed camera, there really is no substitute. So it's not been until I've lived with this car to find out how much I miss all of these mod cons that I thought there must be a solution. Now doing some research, Aston Installations came up first. Reviews online have been fantastic. We spoke with James and the team here. I think that was really the thing that brought me here was the enthusiasm from James and the team here. So here we are. We're gonna run you through the sort of general fit out of how this process takes place and ultimately what it's like showing you the before and the after of integrating Apple CarPlay into an Aston Martin DBS.
Okay, so just quickly, before I show you another example of a conveniently placed DBS, which has just had a uh, conversion next to my car, I think it's really important to mention that Aston installations don't only specialize in the older gen cars. I'm sat in a Rapide, and this is the weirdest thing. It's funny because we all know what Apple CarPlay looks like, but to actually see it inside an older car or a car which never came with it from factory, is it well, really to me in a bit of a nerdy way so cool so they've actually integrated the controller down here so in the rapid it goes here for ergonomic reasons uh, in the dbs it will sit down on the central console here where you can see a conveniently little placed button this toggles between the original system and the new Apple CarPlay system. So when you get in, you press that, and then Apple CarPlay will show up on the dash here. And then you just use this system to spin between icons, like so. So we're on Waze right now. We can go on to Spotify, and there it is. And then you just rotate and flick through all of the options. Now. I know this is standard procedure on most cars, but for the cars which have never had it, and to have them integrated properly into, importantly, the OEM screen, the actual factory integration, so there's no weird sort of head units stuck on the dash or anything like that. The integration is seamless. It just fits and works so well. So yeah, excited. Anyway. As I mentioned, it's not just the older cars. So I'm in a Rapide, but anyone who's uh, been investigating the ownership of Aston Martins lately or happens to find themselves in the situation of, of owning a relatively new Aston Martin, take, for example, the latest, greatest Aston Martin DBS, the Super Legera, phenomenal car, but the infotainment, no CarPlay. Aston installations will fit Apple CarPlay to the latest DBS, the Vantage, even take, for example, the latest Vantage Roadster, their latest car to roll out of the factory, still no CarPlay. Bring it here, they'll integrate it for you. So it's not just the old stuff, and I think that's brilliant. To make things easier, if you're wondering which cars qualify, it is every Aston which has been built in the Gaiden factory. So that's around about 2004 onwards. Now, one thing you might have picked up on is the original screens which are in these cars aren't exactly HD. <laughs> um, so even though you see a very modern interface on it, uh, it still is a little bit low resolution. Now, Aston installations are working on a much crisper HD screen of which conveniently happen to find one in this car which they're using to develop their prototype. But you can see, look at this straight away, you can see the difference in quality. Look how crisp it is. So that's starting to look now really good. The other thing I would say is these guys have been developing the majority of the tech here in-house. So they actually develop, look, check this out. They've, these are their own wiring looms, which they have developed specifically for this system. And this single wiring loom enables them to fit from cars from 2004 all the way up to 2019 or in fact, 20 really, if you've had a brand new DBS or Vantage built. Okay, so you're probably wondering why, why do we have the boot up and apart in order to fit CarPlay? Well, one thing I haven't mentioned is that today, as part of this integration, we're also having front and rear parking cameras fitted. Again, another benefit of having this system is that you can bring the thing right up to date. And not only is it convenient for parking, but when you've got things like this, which is a uh, quite an expensive exposed carbon fiber diffuser and carbon front splitter to have the addition of a integrated rear parking camera, super helpful to stay away from those curbs and just generally help to park this fairly long car. But that's what these guys are doing. It's all a completely new system as well that sits alongside or on top of the existing system. So you don't have to tamper with the Aston stuff. It just goes on top straight from these guys. That is also the reason why we have this whole area exposed as well, in order to fit the front facing camera. I'm also asking Aston Installations as well for a quote and a price on installing the original chrome grille. If you guys follow the journey of the uh, DBS joining the channel from day one, we did have a, a lot of chat about this currently being in black. So now the boot has effectively been taken apart. This component here, which would typically sit under there, look, so that's where the lights and boot opening handle is, is housed. This comes out and we now take it over to the bench and the camera itself will be mounted to this. So when it folds nicely away underneath, it integrates more or less as part of one of the 
OEM components. And there you go. Camera will just sit under there and then remounts underneath the boot as was intended. And it's just been an ongoing development over the last 14 years now 14 years, wow. of just doing more and more. So yeah. what we've got now is um, obviously Apple CarPlay, yeah. uh, Ford cameras, reverse cameras, yeah. uh, DAB integration, tracking systems, and now we've moved into these premises as well. Yeah. We've got the sort of full concierge service, yes. as you've seen with Derek yeah, collecting cars, wheel refurbs, detailing, paintwork. So we'll have your car in yeah. and we can then literally not only do the stuff we do, sure. but call in very good tradespeople on a local basis to get the whole thing yeah. done for you. We it try seems. and pick up the, the yeah, cool. bits and pieces and have a discussion with the client as to, yes. whilst we've got your car, yeah. would you like us to attend to this as well to save you yeah. running about that's yourself? Yeah, about that's you. what we want. Yeah. We want to keep the, the whole character of the car exactly sure. as it came out of the factory, but add modern tech. So, there's been lots of talk about Apple CarPlay specifically of late, but this is a conveniently placed phantom drop head here and Aston installations have actually been tasked with installing Apple CarPlay in here, but it did remind me that it's not only Apple CarPlay that they can install as well, you can also have Android Auto. So we're not glossing over that, it's just I'm an iPhone user, so it's very applicable to me, but it, it doesn't stop there. They are working with Rolls-Royce systems, which in turn means that they are now uh, working with BMW systems. If they can do this, they could probably do lots of other stuff as well. Okay, so here's the after. Just driven down the road to give it a bit of a test and a shakedown, make sure everything's okay. This is the old screen with the old nav on it. I'm just going to show you down here. This is the two buttons which I have inside here. Now this button just on the inside here, that's what toggles between the different modes. If I press that, you'll get Apple CarPlay, and that is now running iOS 14, which I've just updated on my phone. And if we press it again, it goes to the front facing parking camera and then if I put it into reverse it defaults to reversing camera all of the things which this car never came with phone is just plugged in via standard cable um, and I like how it's well integrated those buttons are tucked away in here so you can flick that down and they disappear and then as per the Rapid which I demonstrated earlier rather than it being mounted on the dash this button it's just here, right by the armrest. So it's actually a really nice place for it to be. And you just spin it and scroll it, and that's it. It's just really simple, really easy, uh, as you would expect, really, and that is the greatest compliment. It's not fussy, it's not complicated. You just spin a button, tap it, and on it comes. Brilliant, exactly what I'm searching for. I'm gonna spin this over now to, let's go to, Spotify, there it is, all the music's there, all the playlists are there. It's just spot on. <laughs> so here we go, this is the funniest thing. So not only have I never, since having this car, I've never used this pop-up infotainment screen in front of me. In fact, it was only really allocated to SatNav. Never used it because I've never really had a need to. Uh, it hasn't had the... Uh, modern day functionality that you would expect from a Grand Tour, but now it's so cool. Do you know what I really like about it? Other than the fact that it actually works. It's so weird. It's so cool. It's so weird seeing this. Waze and CarPlay in a car from 11 years ago. Um, but what I really like is how more usable it makes this car. I honestly think, first of all, that this has added value to the car um, because it now has a lot more functionality. Uh, you're encouraged to use it more. Um, I'm more likely to go on longer road trips with it, having this here. And again, it's not just for sat-nav so that you don't sort of get lost or don't have the optimum route. It's just safety and diversions and speed cameras, that sort of thing. So that's fantastic. And then on top of it, we have full Spotify playlist available at the end of my fingertips. Music literally to my ears. So there we have it. Off we go. I honestly feel like... <laughs> You're never gonna get tired of that V12, are you? I honestly feel like the car has had a new lease of life. In a minute, I shall 
turn on, five finger death punch, up to 11, using Waze, cruise myself back home in what feels like a revitalized modern classic. What a thing. Thank you very much to Aston Installations. The experience that I've had filming it, to share it with you, the team there is brilliant. They are a really great bunch of guys there. As always, questions and comments below. See you next time. Ciao.